Smart City, and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Everything was all right until about a mile north of the Cimarron. That's when my horse got a hoof caught in a frozen dog hole and broke his leg. So I had to shoot him. It made me feel awful bad. I didn't feel any better thinking about the walk ahead of me. Close to 40 miles to dodge and carry in my saddle all the way. I guess I'd been on the trail about an hour, near as I could figure it was around three in the afternoon. And I'd ease the saddle off my shoulders for a rest and a smoke. And that's when I saw the stranger riding up from the way I'd come. He was tall and thin. And his horse was taller and even thinner. And they made quite a pair. Hi. How are you? You lost? No. My horse busted his leg away back. I'm on my way to Dodge. Well, that's your horse, huh? I saw it. Yeah. On your way to Dodge, huh? Yeah? yeah, that's right. Uh, you got any more of that tobacco? Yeah, sure. Uh, here you are. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. That's okay. Kind of a big walk you've got ahead, ain't it? <laughs> Kind of. It's going to be dark soon. You figure making camp? Ah, that's the idea. Uh-huh. Well, it's too bad. Yeah. Do you need any food? No, 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 thanks. I, I got enough. Uh-huh. Well, I thank you for the tobacco. Sure. Anytime. Hey. The yeah? arm? Not saying this beast won't drop dead from the shock, but do you want to climb on behind? Save your piece of boot leather for a while, anyway. Why, well, I'd be much obliged if you think that animal of yours can carry us. Well, she won't mind. Should have been dead a long time ago, except she don't know it. She don't mind. Well, okay, thanks. Uh, here, will you hold my saddle till I get up, huh? Yeah, give it here. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. Can you manage the saddle? Yeah, I give it. Yeah, I got it. Now yeah, let's go. You heading for Dodge too? Not in particular. Just north. Uh huh. This beast will do about ten knots with the wind behind her, but we ain't going to get more than five with this load. You ain't in no hurry, I am. Well, I. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to get back tonight. It's a Christmas Eve, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. That backbone of hers sticking into you? Oh, no, it's okay. Thanks. Notice that tin doodjigger tied to you. You with the law? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a U.S. Marshal. Uh, my name's Matt Dillon. That's so... Uh, Never seen a marshal on foot. <laughs> well, it happens sometimes. How is it you're down this way? Isn't it to mite off your course? Hmm? So you marshal down here as well as Dodge? No, no. I, I just took a prisoner across the Cimarron into Oklahoma Territory. Turned him over to the Army there. Did, huh? And then he shot up tight. We must have ridden a couple of miles without a word. I got to thinking about Dodge and Chester and Doc and Kitty and the rest of them. You know, there's something pretty special about any place at Christmas time. 
the backbone of the stranger's nag was just about to split me in two when he talked up. My name is Cowley. Oh? Uh? Cowley. Uh, better heave to a spell. She's breathing mighty hard. All right, hold up. Yes. Ah. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly, isn't it? Yeah. Um, could I trouble you for another smoke? Oh, sure, sure. Here you are. I thank you. Say, hmm? what's it like in Dodge? What? Dodge. What's it like? <laughs> oh, it's like any other town, I guess. <laughs> Pretty big, huh? Well, yeah, I, I guess so. Not so big as New York, though. Oh, oh no, 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 not as big as that. You know, I haven't been in a big town now for more than ten years. Oh, is that so? No. Been down the territories, drifting. Thought I'd move up north this time, maybe go back east. Now you're from the east, huh? Some time back. Say, what's it like? What? Well, Dodge, any town, uh, at Christmas. Same as it used to be? <laughs> well, I guess so. Uh, what do you do? Well, same as most people, I guess. What most people do at Christmas. Well, that ain't saying a lot. What are the folks like? And what does it look like? I, I just... I just kind of like to know. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, well, there's Front Street, uh... That's most of Dodge right now. Of course, it's getting bigger all the time. Do you have any kids? No, no, I'm not married. Yeah. Kids have fun Christmas. Yeah, yeah, they do. That's certain. And Dodge, they sometimes have a party for the kids. A couple of days before Christmas. Uh, Kids like that. And then everybody gets feeling good, looking forward to Christmas Eve. Like last year. There was snow on the ground, but the sky was clear. You, you could even see the stars. I was going down the street to the Texas Trail to meet Doc and Chester. Uh, Chester, he's my deputy. Doc's a doctor in town. We had some work to do later on in the evening. You could uh, see the light shining behind the curtained windows, and almost everybody had a sprig of holly berries hanging up. They got some from the east a couple of days earlier. I... I remember running into John Bumby. He's a kind of general handyman in Dodge. Never says much, but <laughs> he sure had a lot to say that night. Oh, hello, Marshal. Oh, hi, John. <clears throat> a lovely night for Christmas Eve, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is, John. Yeah. Pretty fine night. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, <laughs> Mr. Dillon. Yeah, that's the way it should be, John. Um... You know, Marshal, this is going to be quite a night for me. Yes, sir. Oh, is that oh, so? Oh, yes, sir. Tonight, I'm asking Mrs. McNish to become Mrs. Bumby. What? Mm-hmm. What, well, John, I didn't know that. Oh, I know it's been a mighty fast secret, but I, I'm popping the question tonight. Well, oh. I wish you a lot of luck, John. Hey, I'll I tell you what. Come by to the Texas Trail later and... And we'll have a drink on it. Oh, I will. I really will, Marshal. <laughs> You're good and kind, Marshal. Good and kind. Merry Christmas, <laughs> Marshal Dillon. Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, the same to you, John. That may sound kind of funny to you, but John Bumby's a good man. A little peculiar sometimes, but good as they come. And they don't make enough like him. Of course, most everybody in Dodge suspected Doc and Ms. McNish were sweet on each other. But it just goes to show you. Uh, I'll tell you about John and Ms. McNish a little later. So I went on down the street. You know, it's a funny thing about those words, Merry Christmas. Men say it to each other and, well, it makes them feel kind of good. I know what you mean. Used to be a seafaring man myself. When you're on the sea and it comes Christmas, things like that can they can count a lot. Yeah. Well, we might as well get underway again, eh? Sure. Yeah. All right. Hey. 
You want to take my yep. saddle? Give it here. Okay. Uh, All right. Give it to me. Okay. Come. I guess. I guess you'll miss it in Dodge tonight. I mean, won't you? Well, if you could get a little more out of this nag of yours, we might make it tonight. Oh, there's not a chance. She'll be on her beam ends pretty quick. She's been on a long reach since sunup. Ah. Mighty bare country up this way. All right. Depends on what you're used to, I suppose. Well, mighty bare where I've been, too. It's not like the sea. That's always different. How come you left it? I always heard a sailor doesn't ever get it out of his blood. Or the sea? <laughs> I guess you can get it out of your blood, all right. You got the right reason you can. Yeah, I guess so. Hey. You trying to get something out of me? But, well, no. Get what? I, I would just remark... You want to ride with me? I don't want any talk about the sea. Well, you brought it up. <laughs> I get it. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night, Jack Benny and his whole fun-making gang make a personal appearance at a Long Beach, California veterans' hospital. It's going to be a Christmas they'll never forget, as Benny and the bunch cut loose while they assist the folks at the hospital in trimming their Christmas tree. Be sure to join the fun tomorrow night on CBS Radio, when it's Jack Benny time all across America. Now for the second act of Gunsmoke. Amos Cowley sulked his way along the trail for the next while. And then it was almost like he couldn't stand the quiet. Or maybe he had things on his mind. He turned his head. Go on. What? Go on. Tell me some more. Oh, about Dodge? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Well, you try some more. Huh? Well, uh... They got a little pine tree in the Texas a Trail. Tree? Yeah, I come down a long way from the north. Uh, uh, Kitty Russell, she, she's a hostess in the Texas Trail. Well, she she got a lot of ribbon and gee-gaws and made it look real nice. Uh, that was last Christmas. A star at the top? A star? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It looked like a star, I guess. It <laughs> sure looked pretty. And there was, a, well, a, a, a difference in the place that day. Everybody was celebrating and feeling real good. The doors would swing open and somebody would come in and, you know, maybe somebody you, you just knew to nod at, but because it was Christmas Eve, he'd come right up and say, hello. Oh, maybe that's a good reason, maybe not. I don't know. All right, I'll tell you. Anyhow, it was still kind of early. Kitty and Chester were standing off looking at the tree. Hi, Matt. Good evening, Mr. Dillon. Hi, Kitty. Chester. How do you like it, Matt? Christmas tree. That's oh, yours. that's real pretty. Only tree but one in the whole town. Yeah, Kate's got one over the Alphaganza. Oh, well, I'll have to see it later. Sure, you're next. Where, where's Sam? I don't know. Maybe he started celebrating too soon. Oh. Doc's taking over the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. You, you want a drink, Kitty? Yeah. Sure. All right, I'll get you a drink. I'll get you a drink. You haven't forgotten anything, have you, Mr. Dillon? Forgotten? Uh, what, Chester? There. What did I tell you, Miss Kitty? I knew just as sure as my nose that oh, you forgot. Oh, that. No, no. I, I hadn't forgotten. Oh, well, I, I thought as soon as they get Sam sober enough to take care of the customers, we could go on over to Doc's like we planned. Sure, we'll do that, Chester. Here you are, Matt. Ah, thanks, Doc. Ah, oh. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's still snowing out? No, no, it's not. Uh, why, why are you going, Kitty? All right. Just want to look outside. Uh, 
Ah, real pretty. Man thinks of a lot of funny things that don't mean much. Kitty standing at the door, sniffing the cold air, and the warmth inside, and the whiskey in me. It, it, it was a good feeling. And then Chester and I decided to take a bottle over to Mr. Hightower. He's the telegraph operator over at the depot. He runs a printing shop on the side. Say, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Do you mind if I stop by the church for a minute? Well, no, I don't mind. I just feel kind of right tonight, Mr. Dillon. Figure out to thank somebody for it. Sure. So we stop by the church. I've never been much of a man for a church, I guess, but I went along with Chester. There wasn't anybody else there, just the two of us. Guess we sat for ten minutes in that place. Chester a little way off with his head bowed. You know, there's a lot of peace in a church. Maybe, maybe it's the quiet. Maybe, maybe it's the good that people find in there. Now, whatever it was, it made a man feel glad about pretty much everything. I haven't been in a church since I don't know when. Oh, is that so? I heaved to my... Well, she's becalmed again, mister. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, she sure wasn't built for it, I'll tell you. You ever see anything like that? <laughs> yeah, she is kind of old, isn't oh, she? I've had her going on eight years. She hasn't changed a mite. Eats like a pig and looks like a four-legged mizzenmist. <laughs> Smoke? Don't mind. Hey... What about that, uh, that fellow Hightower? Did you get that bottle to him? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I guess it was lonely over in the depot all alone. He, he was glad for the company. There was a wood fire burning in the stove, but it didn't keep out the cold. Much. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Well, Merry how's Christmas. it going, Mr. Hightower? Oh, slow, Marshal, slow. Bit of excitement about an hour back, though. That's huh? so? Yeah, 9.15 got stuck between here and Hutchison. Lots of snow back there. They getting her out? Oh, sure, they're trying, but <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm not on it. It's going to be a cold night on that train. Well, it's kind of chilly in here, isn't it, Mr. Hightower? Any warmer, and I'm going to sleep. It will say we brought you over a bottle of Irish for company. <laughs> Jameson's well. I declare I was just thinking about a tot before you boys come in. Now, that's real <laughs> friendly. Will you have a drink with me? We sure will. Let's open her up, huh? A couple of glasses up on the shelf there, Chester. Get them down, will you? I don't know if you get an idea about the folks in Dodge or not. They, they're not any different than any other people. Or the town either. Uh, I guess maybe it's a pretty small place at that. The depot, the hall, a few stores, a church, Doc's office, a Texas trail, Alifaganza, my office. Uh, well, not much, but... Hey, it's where you live, you know? Sounds all right. I lived in a town once back east. Small. I know what you mean. Well, maybe you'll be going back. Maybe. Say, the kids, they still believe in St. Nick. Oh, sure. I uh, mighty suppose. few kids down where I've been. Injun kids, they don't believe in St. Nick. No reason they should, I guess. I used to believe in it, you know that? Well, I guess most people did one time or another. Hey, you figure we come maybe ten miles? Maybe. Yeah, it's getting dark. Yeah. Well, come on. You want to... You want to ride the saddle for a bit? Oh, no, no. I, uh, that's okay. Well, then, okay. We rode on, and I thought about last year, about Kitty... 
Doc and Chester and me, going over to Doc's place after Doc caught tired at Tendon Bar at the Texas Trail. It was about a quarter to midnight, and we stood around and sang Christmas carols. And I, I remember how it sounded that night, how it looked. The glow in the stove in the middle of the room, and uh, the frosty windows. <laughs> yeah, it was Christmas Eve, all right. It was so deep, nowhere. What do you say if we... Hey, hey, uh, listen. Hey. Huh? Huh? Oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, I feel sentimental. That's exactly what I feel. I feel sentimental. I know what you mean, Doc. I surely know. Okay, Doc. Bring him out. <laughs> And I remember how Doc scuttled over to the bureau and brought out some packages. The presents weren't much, but it didn't matter what they were. And when we'd finished opening them, it was Chester who said what we were all thinking. I just... I I, I just want to say... Miss Kitty, Doc, you, Mr. Dillon... I just want to say that this is the best doggone Christmas I ever had. And, and that's what I want to say. Say, you was going to tell me about that, uh, that fellow John was caught in that woman. What was her name? Oh, oh yeah. Ms. McNish. That's right. Well... She said yes, and you've never seen two happier people in your whole life. Yeah, she's Ms. McNish Bumpy now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, you know, you might settle for a bit in Dodge, or you could get work there. Sure would be fine if you could get back tonight, wouldn't it? Well, it, it can't be helped. I'd be a lot further away and a sight more tired if you hadn't come along. <laughs> Now, listen, how far do you figure before there's a place you might pick up a horse? Oh, I don't know, 15 miles or so, maybe. Oh, I'm not going to make any 15 miles in this nag tonight, that's for sure. Oh, that's all right. Now, I tell you what, you go on alone, you see. Oh, no, forget now, it. Now, you go I... on alone. She'd hold out with one man on her. And then you get a fresh horse and you ride into Dodge tonight. Well, thanks, that's now, very I'm kind. telling you, I want you to go. I'll be fine, I've walked before. Probably make it almost as quick as you... Look, it's, it's real nice of you, Mr. Colley, but no thanks. Uh, now, Christmas don't mean nothing to me. you got friends waiting for well, you. Well, I'll see them tomorrow. Ah, uh, you're a fool. Well, that may be. All of them nice folks, I'm going to make them feel pretty bad. Uh, look, I'll stay. If you want to go on along, uh, uh, thanks for the ride. Well... Might as well make camp, then. <laughs> I guess so. And listen, you want to tell me some more about uh, what you was telling me before we turn in? Well, sure. I but... take it kindly, mister. I'll get yourself settled. I got some stuff in my pack we can eat and maybe get a fire going. Then after we eat, you can tell me some more. We made a fire and then shared what we had for supper. He seemed to soften up after that, and we talked for a couple or three hours. It was like he was starved for news of people, everyday things, and just plain company. And that's how we spent Christmas Eve together out on the plane. And then when the fire was dying down and I was about ready for sleep, 
He said... Marshal. Yeah? I want to tell you something. I've been needing to tell it for a long time. Do you mind? Why, of course I don't mind. Well, then I'll tell you. A few years ago, I was skipper of a little schooner. It used to sail up and down the East Coast. You know, Boston, New York. Yeah. Well, one night... We hit dirty weather off New Jersey. Real dirty. Blew us off course and we piled up on the rocks and knocked the bottom out. That's too bad. There was 18 passengers aboard, Marshal. Four of them was kids. We never saw them again. No. And my own... My own wife and my kid went down, too. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, no. Something must have happened to me after that. I didn't want nothing to do with... With ships or the sea, and I started to drift out this way. I couldn't forget, though, do you know? And I didn't want to be near folks, especially kids, to remind me, do you know? Yeah. Well, that's how come I've been slewing around ever since. Sure, I understand. Just kind of wanted to get it off my chest. Sure. Marshal, I'd like to ride into Dodge with you tomorrow. You think I might meet some of them folks you was telling about? Why? Oh, I don't see why not. But that'd be all right. Maybe I wouldn't need to drift no more. Maybe I could uh, <laughs> drop anchor, do you know? Yeah, you might at that. Yes. Well, good night. Good night. Merry Christmas, Marshal. Merry Christmas, Mr. Cowley. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Anthony Ellis, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, with Harry Bartell and John Daner, Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow night, Edgar Bergen's real-life daughter Candy pays him and you a visit on The Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. Candy and Charlie hit it off fine, but Edgar has cause to regret his hasty decision to invite his six-year-old daughter into the show, especially when she starts throwing her voice. Sounds like fun tomorrow night on most of these same stations when CBS Radio presents The Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks, teaches you how to laugh every Sunday on the CBS Radio Network.